we've just been talking about that since we decided we would that Daniel wanted to do this is how much of what Nijinsky himself was feeling about the planet, about its destruction, about the First World War, about how humans were not taking care of the earth. Although he went mad with all this and without his work and, and he was probably schizophrenic anyway, the first scene in the play, he, we, he speaks these thoughts and suddenly it's resonating more and more that we're at war. The world is in some terrible state of terrific confusion and we don't know where it comes from next. All over, so we are not in a secure, safe world now as they were not when he said the things he wanted to say to the human race who really wanted to see him dance. So, so there is something from him that seems to be speaking to us today. Well, that, that's the whole thing that I'm now trying to do. I've done a lot of research before because I was going to work on it 15 years ago with my, the, the ballet company in, in Britain. Now that we are doing it in such a huge way, I mean, this is, we thought we'd never do it. I thought the ballet would never be done and we're getting a chance to do it here in a, in a massive way with a huge three-act ballet. One goes back to all of this research, all of the books I looked at 15 years ago mean so much more today so but all the way through now I'm picking finding reading his sister's version of his life his his wife's version of his life Diaghilev, Fokin, all these people who knew him f to find this man and I'm becoming frankly more and more emotional about him um, because it's the pity of it that he was so gifted and yet so unable really to deal with it. With, as he was shy, he was um, not really that well educated. He danced very early with his parents and suddenly he's in the Imperial Theatre School and the Tsar is coming and the next thing he's a worldwide phenomenon. How do you deal with that when he's actually quite a private interior man? Except when he's out on there on the stage. So it's the tragedy is is how he clearly couldn't handle it after he was sacked by Diaghilev for marrying and then eventually had no work, the work stopped, the money stopped, he had two children, he had a wife but he had no, his art had gone, he, he, didn't, he didn't dance he, and then he began very quickly to go mad, so soon, he had about 10 years as a world superstar and then it was, it was gone, bereft. No, I, he, he, was, he was a genius, you know, we don't say it, we think Shakespeare was. Uh, Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, there'll be, there'll be others. I don't want him to be an enigma. I, we must find the real man, the man who goes to a socialist par, socialite party um, and shows off and is shown off, does the dance that he's required to do to sing for his supper. And, and manages to scoot away, to run away, and goes out into the streets of Paris to pick up prostitutes, whom he, as we, as we know, respected them. They were not dirty women for him. They, they made him free. They gave him some sensuality that he didn't find in, 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 until he married Roma, and then probably not in the same way anyway. And so the difference between the man out there on the stage and the real man in the street is what we have to try and find some midway between those two to understand. He could seem too much like a legend, that we're just telling the le this legend of this, this, telling the story of this great legend, who most, a lot of people won't even remember the name of, younger people today, who? Or even Nureyev. Who are we talking about here? Um, so I've, I feel that I have a duty to help. We all feel the same. But my duty is with the dancers, and particularly the dancer playing the Jake that we talk about him as a real person with real life problems. He's not just in the history books of dance. Does that make some sense as well? To know who this, this man was, the god of dance, his legacy is with us. 
The problem is if you see a Ballet Russe production today, because they do, they do Ballet Russe seasons, which came to London recently, and actually they're, <clears throat> they're almost unwatchable because they are of their time. They're too bright, they're too garish, you think, oh my God, because we, we're different today. I'm not, not a believer, I'm afraid, but the spirit, we have to find the spirit of the man through the people who knew him. But a lot of it was to do with any ballet company, with fights, political difficulties, di diplomacy that doesn't work out. He steals too much time for rehearsals from one choreographer, so then there's a huge battle. I mean, the battles that go on, in Valley Colonies, more than legitimate theatre, which is theatre theatre, which is where my world comes from, is to try and find him with the middle with all this, maybe the germ of this man who was a real man. We have a huge responsibility, but it's very moving. The most important thing to do is to keep the human feelings about it, so it doesn't become a paean of praise to this great dancer. We won't get anywhere. I would like to find him the man who went into the streets of Paris and picked up prostitutes and then went back and, and became the fawn, you know, and it's finding that man.